Shalom, Salama Siemi, Shalom. Greetings, my Israelite brothers and sisters, whether you are grafted in under the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach or you are of the bloodline covenant. So I begin this essay with Psalms 46.10. And Psalms 46.10, it allows me to see what we have again, we have been going through as a people. And so a couple of days ago, um, let me just kind of give you the background. And Hebrew sphere, uh, brother Alex had asked me about Psalms 4610 and, and if he could provide a breakdown of it. And I said, sure. So when I had replied to him, I said, all right, well, let's take a look at what Psalms 4610 says. And it says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I'll be exalted in the earth. Now, let me give you the version that I like, and that's the King James Version. The King James Version goes, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen, and I'll be exalted in the earth. And I wanted to give you those two versions of scripture. One was the American Standard, and one was the King James Version. And the American Standard Version always says, you know, the the, the people. But King James says the heathens. And there's a distinction for that. And, and I want to clarify that because this is what I've spoken to and I replied to Brother Alex about. And I said, let's look at what 46.9 says. And let's look at what 46.11 says. So we're going to read it all in, in its entirety. And I'll even read from uh, starting at verse 46 and 8. And it says, come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge Selah. So when you look at that in context, when you're reading from Psalms 46, 8 through 10, you can see that the Most High does a lot. He moves a lot. And he doesn't necessarily show forth his hand, but he shows forth his works. And that reminded me of, of Hebrews 11, 1. And that was on me today because of some things that I was going through. When just something that happens and then you always want to say, well, Lord, are you doing something? Are you showing something? Because it's not personally happening to us. And so Hebrews 11, 1 states, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So on this time, we are dealing with principalities 
and rulers of this world that we can't see, but we know that there's a shakeup going on. We know that there are issues going on in terms of how this world is being led, how it was being led and, and where the principalities, these rulers of the earth that we can't see, how they want to lead in the time of Jacob's deliverance, the time of Judah's awakening, the time of Israel's awakening, the time that the two sticks are understanding and coming together. So during my little, you know, me, me, me fest, I had about Monday and Tuesday. I was more concerned about, Lord, what do you want me to do? I need to have a plan. And like most reasonable people, I think reasonably, I said, Lord, I need to have a plan. I need to do something that is a regular nine to five. I think I need to do something that has all the things that I need for my family. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. And then I had to realize this is a different dispensation. See, never in my life have, have I not been able to work or feel productive. But I had to realize I wasn't producing for the kingdom. I was producing for man. See, there's a difference when you're producing for man and you're producing for the most high. It doesn't feel like what I'm saying is reaching people. It doesn't feel like what I'm saying has an effect. But when I get comments and when I get, you know, appreciation for what I'm doing, I understand that it really does. Because I know that I'm not the only one that's going through this. See, the, the great thing is, the Most High hasn't given me a spirit of fear. And I know that when I'm asking for things, it's not being done out of a fearful manner. But I had to realize what I'm asking for is being done because, think about this, for over 400 years, we have been told what to do and we have to be on a schedule. Think about this. Our ancestors up until now have been told that we are on a schedule and this is what the schedule needs to look like. And the funny thing is that schedule becomes reinforced by society. And it's a, a reinforcement that's a negative one. Oh, look, you're low down, no good Negro that doesn't, that's not doing anything. Look, you just simple. Look, you're not doing this or you're not doing that. You're looking lazy. You're looking this, you're looking that. All these things to demean. But then we look at the prophets of old. Just think about Isaiah. Isaiah was hiding in a, he was hiding in a cave. Excuse me. Elijah was hiding in a cave. He hid in the cave for a couple of years. God had put him in a cave and he was being fed by ravens 
by crows. And, and God had allowed the brook to have water. So he had access to water and he had access to food. And he was living in a, a cave. Food, water, water, and shelter. Well, in today's world of psychology, those are Maslow's basic needs. Basic, basic needs. Look, this is all I need to survive. And when you are on a run and on the run, sometimes we just have to be in survival mode. See, what we have understood in this awakening, we have been in survival mode. We haven't been really living, but we have just been going through the perfunctory motions to be able to survive. See, what the Most High did this year was something profound. And that those events that's going on, it wasn't necessarily profound to us as quote unquote black folks, as who we're waking up as Israelites, as an understanding who we are as being the people. It wasn't profound to us because see, we had been waking up and we were waking up. And as we were waking up, we were making the declaratory statements. And those statements were saying, look, we're the people, this nation's being judged and we're about to get up on out of here. And as you had these different ministries coming on out. Each ministry was serving its purpose. One ministry of who we are, historical, one of prophetic, and ministries of the knowledge and being able to have those applicable standards of knowledge no matter where you're at in, in the awakening. But see, right now, the rumbles have turned to, turned to groans. The groans have now turned to shouts. And the shouts are very audible. And, and it's audible so much so that it is now shaking the national and international construct. See, all these, as these nations are trying to poise themselves or trying to frame themselves and structure themselves for war attack or for, for warfare tactics and things of that nature. We're sitting here as a people saying, We've done our 400 years. Judgment is here. And we're getting ready to go. Whether you all like it or not. See. As a people. We're understanding how things are happening. As a people, we're declaring it. As a people, we're, we're now offering a sacrifice a phrase. And we don't even understand this sacrifice of praise is because as a people, we're feeling it. We are feeling it. 
because this is a time like no other. We have, we are not able, and we do not have the luxury of being comfortable anymore because the Most High is awakening us out of the slumber. He's telling us right now, look, you're going to get uncomfortable and that's going to force you to get jittery. And that's going to force you to start to move. And that's going to force you to start to understand this is what you're looking at. This is how you're moving. You know, the funny thing is, I read all these articles. I was just reading an article today in USA Today. And, you know, it, it's a it's a it was a fluff piece of, you know, 56 percent of the of the nation or the voters, you know, the, it was polled by a YouGov poll. For. Um, nonpartisan. And it was just simple questions of does does America or do you feel that America is going to descend into a civil war? No matter the election results. And in the uh, the people polled, 56% of the respondents said yes. Because you have to understand. You have to understand that there's no peace. You have to understand in in their perception. They're already declaring, look, there's no God or there's no God that really works for me. Because I thought that my God was going to be in my security. See, even Jeremiah was saying, look, security, peace and safety. And then sudden destruction. See, for them, that security blanket that the United States had, even though that was a time of our destruction, we had to understand that their lack of security is really the time of our deliverance. And deep down, they know that. Deep down, that's why they can't be still. Deep down, that's why they have to talk. They have to talk out that we're not the people, or you know, we're we're this, we're that. This social activity or activism that's happening, that's now being said, that's now being experienced. It's because the tools of racism to fill. the power of their religious principality is now being taken away. See, you have to realize that there's principalities and there's authorities in all the high places and spiritual realms. See, racism, believe it or not, racism isn't something that is fueled as as more powerful than what it is here in the United States. Yes, will you go to different areas of the world and experience racism? Yes, you will. But let me tell you, the heart and the seat of the racism is here in the United States because that's the seat of Babylon. See, you got to remember, when you're looking at how the U.S. was formulated, it was always formulated based off of the way that we would be portrayed. See, I always like to tell people, oh, you know, that well, they always come at me. Well, you know, here's the thing: you all create this doctrine of racism, and 
and that's not the case and that's not this and that's not that. And the sad thing is they're either so ignorant or they're just blind, excuse me, or they're being deceitful. And they don't want to talk about, well, you know, didn't um, Meyer Goldwyn and Meyer, you know, MGM, didn't they get their start from a racist pro production of Birth of a Nation? When the films even started, they were the ones capitalizing on racism. We didn't create those films. We didn't tell Woodrow Wilson, hey, this is the best film because it talks about racism. And he didn't say that verbatim, but you have to understand the dog whistles at that time has now been found out. And they know that they can't dog whistle like that anymore because then you question, okay, what do you mean by that? Speak plainly. Well, you know, it was this and it was that. And it was, okay, speak plainly. Well, you know, speak plainly. Do you understand right now when you actually tell them to speak plainly? When you actually say, no, I understand what your intent was because it's this, this, and this. And you break it on down for them. They can't run away. Well, that's not what I mean. Oh, that's not. Okay. Well, that was by your own words. Wait, you're paying attention to my words? You're not paying attention to the, I'm, I'm white and I say so? No. No, we're not. We're going on what, based on your words, based on your intentions, and based on your actions. Right? That's the full concept and the full modeling of communication. Well, just because I say it doesn't mean it's true. No, no, no. Because you said it, it is true. The way you're acting is true. See, you understand that's been the model that when you hear the whole people, the Trump derangement syndrome and all this other stuff. I'm not saying that Bernie Sanders is even is any better. But I understand you have to realize that's actually just modern day witchcraft. That's modern day witchcraft. And the reason I say it because yesterday when I took time off, I was looking at this um, Netflix show. I think it was, it was on Amazon Prime, but um, but I think the, the current season is on Stars or Epics, one of those cable shows. And it was talking about the, the, ep the show was called Britannia, Britannia. And so I always like to see it because I always like to know like what lies that are on out there that they try to perpetrate. And it was funny because it was showing the Romans um, incursion into Britain. And it was giving its tale of, you know, how things were done and, and how, you know, all this stuff was, was, uh, was shown from their perspective. But I thought it was actually interesting because the Roman soldier, of course, he got killed. He was one of the first ones to get killed. He was a Nubian. And his God was a God above of, of a God above all gods. The Lord, the Lord above all lords, the king above all kings. We already knew it. He was a Hebrew. I thought, oh, okay, they're 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 trying to show that in front of our face. It was a Hebrew, and the Hebrew got killed. And so, as that story, as the 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 little series was unfolding, one of the the people of Britannia. He was a spy, but what he would do, he would cast spells because he would have people talking and listening. And then when he would have them to listen, he was able to provide a thought. 
an underlining thought. And that underlining thought would be what was needed to break their minds. And so it was a point of the show that the way that he operated, it messed up one of the Roman soldiers so bad, it took him about you know, a couple of months for him to recover. And so when he finally recovered, it was odd, but he recovered through the use of drugs. I said that is a striking similarity. I don't think they really even knew the similarity of what's happening. Because you have to understand who, which, which demographic is being affected the most with opioids. And of course, you have the onesies, the very rare ones of George Floyd. Very, very rare. But it's so abundant with them, they actually stop counting. Because that's what you get the chance to do. When you're in power, you can fake the numbers all you want. But the funny thing about that is that no matter how much you try to fake, there's a most high that will break the bow and cut the spear and sunder. See, you got to remember their physical war went to a psychological war and they were able to use psychological tools, not just on us, but on their own people to continue to advance the idea of white supremacy. And it's a layered system. It's very layered from media to social media to publications to schools to institutions. It's a multi layer system, but it provides the same premise. But no matter how much you layer it, guess what happens? You can't fight the most high. And we saw that last week when Trump had gotten infected by the coronavirus. And it wasn't that he had been infected, but most of his staff had been infected. And now most of his, his staff were even afraid to be around him. See, there is going to come a point in time that no matter how much they try to lie, and I think that Trump was already sick with that for a while, but whatever medications that he was taking and whatever, uh, whatever things that the doctors were trying to um, prescribe to lessen the symptoms, I believe that those drugs, like everything else in this fight against COVID-19, had began to lose its impact, had began to fade. And that's why people are so concerned and worried, especially in the mainstream media, is because what happens when those drugs lose its impact? What happens when it fades? And so the question for me, it's not what happens. The question for me is, do they know that this is something from the most high? And if they do know it's something from the most high, do they realize how long they have? And, and sure enough, as soon as I ask that question, 
Teo had posted some things for his Patreon. And I got the notification as being a Patreon of his. Of all these different military events that were occurring. Some were occurring in China. Some were occurring uh, because of Taiwan. Some was occurring in the Baltic. And everything had its own explanation of why things had occurred. Because the alignment is real. The alignment is real. It Babylon is it's it's the two legs, the two iron legs. You have the west and you have the east. Those two iron legs. But out of the that polarization that's where you are able to have our captivity founded. Because as the war as as the world is polarized, it becomes much more difficult for people to have that understanding of who we are because of the influences within those nations. And so I say that because this morning as I was on Hebrew Sphere, I was tagged in a in a in a breakdown by this brother that I believe he had he had first posted something or he had said, you know, now I'm convinced, you know, it said my mind is made up that we're the people. And I I don't, I don't ever demean the folks or I don't say, well, you know, finally, <laughs> I don't say any of that because I know, listen, we all have our, our growth process because you have to remember as we had woken up and we made that that waking up more vocalized here in the United States than anywhere else and i'm not going to i'm not going to denounce any of the the african countries because yeah i understand these african countries of course are going to be awoke or awakened or understand who they were they're they're sitting on it Will they have the means and the vehicle to try to um, bring it in mass? No, not really. Other than YouTube, but not really. But when we had our gatekeepers and taskmasters, our boule, those figureheads, actually coming on up and chiming on out and saying, these things that was totally against their ethos. You could tell that the principalities were were breaking. The, The structure and the spiritual was breaking. And you have to understand that when the spiritual structure starts to break, the natural and physical structure is right behind, excuse me, is right behind it. So as we look and we see, not in the natural, but with our spiritual, we can see them scrambling. They are scrambling. How did the coronavirus affect the White House? How come all this? How come all that? No, we need to keep things open. No, we need to do this. I, look, when Trump had sent that tweet, we already knew what, what it was going to look like. 
I haven't looked at the news when, you know, they're trying to say they're going to rebound and everything else. Or Trump's going to say, well, you know, I didn't kill it and it's this and that. We already knew this. The bottom line, they couldn't print stimulus out of thin air again. Because we had already said, if they printed stimulus out of thin air, then they could print reparations out of thin air. So do you understand the, their whole terminology of why they can't pay the wages of the righteous? That's gone out the window. And I said, you, have to, you also have to understand, they now have to cut their their nose to spite their face. And really what you have to understand is they're now creating the exit plan. Oh no, this thing is done for real, for real. All those folks that are giving the orders in the background, yeah, this thing is done. We, we tried to do that little plan, it's done. We tried to do this little maneuvering, it's done. We tried to bring it like this, it's done. All the things that we used to do, all the tools that we used to have, it's no longer available. We tried to come out with this platinum plan. It didn't work. It was dead on contact. It was dead on arrival. Because these black folks, it's not just one leader. It's not just one particular group or foundation or organization. It, it's not just one particular order. See, that's what you have to understand. That they, they work in silos. They have to understand the silo. If your silo is a specific silo, they go after the silo. It's easy. This confuses them completely because they don't understand that this is a spiritual thing. Nor do they want to understand it's a spiritual thing because just think about that. If once they understand it's a spiritual thing, they know that's Jeremiah 51. Well, no, no, no. I, I think I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll put more mainstream churches in the recommendations and news feeds. And then guess what you have them in the comments section? Hey, you know, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about that? What about this? And their comment sections get quickly lit up. They, they, they can't withstand the truth. And again, when you can't withstand the truth, it's harder to lie than it's just being truthful. They hate when mummies are exhumed out of the tombs of the pyramids. They hate that. Because why? Oh, it doesn't fit the narrative that they're white. Or if they weren't white, then they look like the people that we have here. And that makes it hard to justify you know, what we're doing, and we can't lie, and our lives fall apart. Do you understand, like, the reason I have the, the little photos of the principalities, the buildings crumbling, because the buildings are crumbling. The fires are burning. They're burning in the spiritual and in the natural. You had over 4 million acres of fire burning, and they're still burning in California. But you also have a burning in the spiritual. In the spiritual, every time we open our mouths, every time we declare something, you have to understand that's that's war. We're warring in the spiritual because we're declaring, Lord, you are getting us on out of here. You're freeing your people. Hallelujah. All praises to the Most High. Lord, you are getting ready to put the wealth back in our hands. You're getting ready to put the, the, the silver, the gold, and anything of tremendous value back in our hand. Father, you're getting ready 
to move us on out to green and spacious pastures where there's even more wealth and more resources for us to build and provide and to innovate and to thrive. See, as I'm putting that on out there, guess what? We're saying, amen, let it be so. Because we're we're now declaring and we're empowering the Most High to do what he needs to do. See, we have to understand Egypt wasn't an overnight process. It took them a few months. Some scholars said it took them about at least two years. Because Moses wasn't, wasn't showing up to Pharaoh's house every day. It was in a process of, of at least 12 to 18 months, at the least. Hey, you're starting to get comfortable? Yeah, take this. Hey, you're starting to think that you're going to open up schools? Yeah, we'll take that. Hey, you're starting to think that you're going to have recovery for this market? Yeah, we'll take this. Hey, you're starting to think that you're not going to have any conflict? Yeah, well, here's that. And that's what the Most High is doing. And when you can't make sense of something, it drives you crazy. How many times do we have a puzzle and we try to put those puzzles together and we see all the pick, the, the pieces that look similar and you think that they would be in this order or in this order and then guess what? You just get completely flustered and you walk away. The problem is that puzzle still has to be built. Just like with these judgments, it still has to go through. Now, whether you walk away and you try to ignore them, it doesn't mean that it's not going to continue. That's like when you have a a water leak or your bathtub or your, excuse me, your toilet overflows. Keep trying to plunge it. You try to do what you can do and it doesn't work on out. You just don't sit there and see your your toilet overflow. You either try to turn off the water if that's not working and the backup is going on and all sorts of plumbing issues are occurring, then it's time for you to pick up a phone and call somebody. Somebody that's wiser. Somebody that has a sense of what's going on. Somebody that has been able to kind of discern what the Most High is doing. See, don't don't think that we're trying to be or arrogant of this. Don't think that we're trying to say, well, you know, we're the best. We know everything. We're the people. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, you're going to get yours. Honestly, yeah, a lot of a lot of us would like to say that. But we also understand, listen, pride comes before the fall. And guess what? How low have we fallen to be in this state? And now in this state, guess what we need to do? We need to help. We need to advise. When they pick up the phone to call that plumber to get their spiritual house in order, we can't say that we're off duty. We have to be that 24-hour plumber. We got to be that roto rooter that says, all right, you know, show me where it's on at. Let me see and let me tell you what I can do. Let me tell you why this thing is happening. Let me tell you what's getting ready to go down. Let me show you in the scriptures why it is that you're seeing what you're seeing and why I see what I'm seeing and why you can't see what I'm seeing. unless you ask the Most High for spiritual discernment. 
You need to bring it to the Father in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the name of Christ Jesus. And you need to do it in a way that the lens isn't the rosy white lens that they would believe in, that they want you to believe it is. Because when you're looking at, at a picture, you know, when you have those little goggle, those drunk goggles on that they try to do at the safety fairs, you know, don't drink and drive and all that other stuff, or, you know, try to drive in this, um, this little concentrated thing with a, with an assistant to help you. So you can see the effects of drunk driving. But what does it do? It just impairs your vision. So when you don't have your spiritual eyes impaired, you can start to see. And that's okay because the Most High knows the prescriptions. He does. They're not completely thrown away. And don't ever tell a Gentile now you're, 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 just, you're completely useless. Because you never know what the most high may have for them in the kingdom. See, as a people that we have been actively thrown away, we should be the ones that's most empathetic. Yeah, you can't see it. Look, let me tell you, let me tell you this. The moment that they lose all their money in the stock market, the moment that they realize that there's no hope in the stock market, I'm telling you, attitudes will change. Their hearts will break. And you have to understand that's what the Most High is doing. He's breaking them. Because when you break something, guess what? Some will be repaired and the others will just stay broke to the very end. Up until time, they're going down to the grave. But some will humble themselves and ask, Lord, what did I do? What am I doing? And I need you to help me. I don't care what, I don't care what it is. Lord, I don't care if you're a green alien. Oh, sapphire, sard, and stone. Oh, they're the people. Well, that kind of makes sense now. Because you have to understand, this is this is what's going on. The Most High is preparing their hearts. See, judgment is a is a is a heart changer. Some people are like, "Nah, this is something going on. Something's weird. Something's happening. This this isn't normal." I need to ask the Most High to show me what normal is, to show me why. And there are some that say, you know, uh, this I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to do what I'm gonna do all the way to the end. Well, you have to think about that. A lot of people, when they find out that they have cancer, they don't want to change their routine that caused them to have cancer to begin with. And then they end up dying. And it's like, oh, we saw that one coming. Well, what do you think the world sees? Well, white supremacy is a cancer. We don't want to change the cancer. They're going to end up dying. And the world's saying, yeah, we saw that one coming. They don't, they're not appalled by the COVID. They're appalled because, do you understand, it's the people that are the white supremacists that say, look, nothing can break me. Because... If I feel inferior, then guess what? My white supremacy isn't as superior as I thought it was. So something's happening. So this is what I wanted to have today, that we just need to be still and understand that the Most High has everything under control. We don't need to be triggered on anything because here's the funny thing. When we get spiritually triggered, we know that the Most High is moving. 
Because the funny thing is that we have to understand our spiritual triggers means that we are warring effectively in the spirit. And there's going to be a breakthrough in the natural. So that's why patience is a thing that we must have and practice. That's where we're at right now. So don't be discouraged about anything. But in this time, we have to encourage each other. Because I'm going to tell you, those those little small victories, they will not be published or publicized in any form, shape, or fashion at all. So in conclusion, if you like the content provided from Covenant Awakenings, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I love reading the comments, and I'll comment along with you. And I appreciate your comments. I do appreciate the feedback. Also, visit us at CovenantAwakenings.com, and I have my Patreon at, and my Cash App in the description below. And also, if you haven't done so yet, please, please subscribe to HebrewSphere.com, where you get more knowledge and edification. And even if you are one that wants to come on on here and kind of criticize the video of, you know, this is black supremacy and all the other talk, no, come on HebrewSphere.com. And then explain your position. And then guess what we can do? We can give you historical resources. And it's funny, when you do that, you give them historical resources and they still try to counteract that. <laughs> they, they, they try so long and then they just go away because they realize that they lost a battle. But that's okay because many will go here and there to increase knowledge. This is just about increasing your knowledge. You've been in the system. We've all been in the system. They don't want us to learn. They just want us to perform. to make sure that you're continuously indoctrinated in something that you see failing all around us. With that said, family, shalom. Salama, siyemi, shalom. Peace and blessings, Israel.